Well, just got back from the junk store and uh, show you what I bought. Oh no, dropped one on the floor. I'm always dropping things on the floor. Um, these are bouncy though. These are rubber grommets, so I needed some of those. But uh, this is what I went to the junk store for. Uh, some uh, 6 megahertz oscillators to finish up my uh, my Z80 here. So that will go in there. Um, but that's not why I'm making the video today. Uh, I found some of these guys, uh, which are interesting, and I thought we'd play with them. Um, we saw them earlier in a different video, which was this one. Uh, it's this solid state fuse, this poly fuse. Uh, this one happens to be a 3 amp, uh, 3 amp fuse. And the way they work is they become very, very resistive when they get hot and um, nothing goes through them, so they, they open up. Um, and then when they uh, when you remove short or whatever and they cool back down, they turn back on again, so they're a, a resettable fuse. Um, so these are resettable fuses. Uh, the box labeled these as uh, 50, I mean uh, 500 milliamps. So these are supposed to trip at 500 milliamps. Um, so I thought we would go ahead and give them a try and see if they really are uh, 500 milliamps and what does that mean and then uh, see if I can find a data sheet on these. We'll uh, try to look them up and see what they really do. Alright, I thought I'd use the uh, the uh, dummy load that I that I built. Um, so we have um, we have a couple wires here. Uh, so uh, this is uh, these two uh, wires go to a power supply and the power supply is set to uh, 5 volts and so we'll connect them up and uh, we get uh, 5 volts on the uh, display and then I can add some current and we can go up uh, let's see what the power supply is set to I think we just need to go up to at least an amp um, Here's up oh, there we go, and then, and then it trips. So the uh, compliance of the uh, the power supply is set to one amp. So we can test our our polyfuse up to one amp. So uh, here's the here's the little fuse, and we will put it in line in series with the positive lead. So this is, the negative is still hooked to ground, but the positive goes through the uh, polyfuse. I'll hook this up and we get our 5 volts again. So let's turn it up. Uh, 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 300, 400, go up to 500. I don't think it'll blow at 500. I think uh, it's rated to take 500. So here's 511 milliamps. I'll let it sit there a while, make sure, make sure it can handle this. There's a, a heating process, I believe, that has to take place. They're, they don't trip very fast. I think they're, they uh, take a while to trip. Let's see, let's go up to uh, 600. Uh, 600 is fine. We're a bit low in voltage now, 4.4. That's interesting. Let's go back down to, oh, hmm. so 4.9, maybe to add some resistivity also. Not quite sure about that. I'm not an expert of these things. Let's see, uh, let's go back to a 500. Here we are, 530. 600. Let's see if we can handle 600 for a while. We'll watch the voltage here and see if it's dropping. It is dropping. So maybe it's heating up. It's kind of slow. Let's take it up to uh, 650. There we go, 650. The voltage is dropping pretty fast now. Let's see if it'll finally trip after a while.
it's still headed downwards. So I think it's trying to protect itself. It's taking a while. Maybe I should have a uh, a clock in the image here too. But it's been less than a minute. Yeah, it's still headed down. I'd reach over and touch that thing, but I bet you it's really hot. <laughs> yeah, it's just it keeps falling, so it's trying to protect itself. Yep, there we go. It finally cut out. So I think that's probably how it works. If it's just slightly above that 500 milliamp uh, uh, spot, then um, it'll slowly, it's, it's a kind of a, a power thing, right? So it's the amount of energy that's in there. So if you're just a little bit over, it heats up slowly. Probably if you're double the current, it pops pretty quick. Uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if it's reset. We'll put it back to 100 milliamps and it, it looks like it's a reset. It's still delivering 4.8 volts. It's probably pretty, pretty warm. Let me put a, let me put a different one in there that's cool. Here's another one. I bought 10 of them. They were 10 cents each. Um, there we go. All right, let's take it up to, let's say, 800 milliamps and see how quickly it blows. So, 5, 6, 7, there we go, 800 milliamps. And now we'll watch it. should uh, heat up faster this time. Yep, there it goes. Yep, just... So that was much quicker than it was last time. So let's... Um, let's go ahead and short this out. Let's set this for... 1 amp. Or let's see. I think that compliance is going to trip. So let's uh, let's set it for 980. And I don't think my power supply will trip. There we go. 980. All right. So 980. We'll get a fresh fuse, um, and we'll see how quickly this blows. So we will put this in line. Ready, ready, set, go. Watch the voltage fall. Yep, there it goes. So it's pretty quick. So when you're at double the compliance, it goes pretty quick, probably within, say, 10 seconds, something like that. Um, We'll remove the, um, I'm touching it now. Oh yeah, it's warm. Definitely warm. Uh, let's turn the current down a bit. And we'll turn it back on. And it's already reset. Um, so. Looks like it's shorted. Wait a minute, that wasn't right. Why? It's still giving me a zero. So it's still hot. It takes a while for it to cool down. Blow on it. Let's see if it's a reset. Yep, there we go. Let's see if I can find a data sheet and uh, see how these things operate. Found this online, uh, which I think is a great, uh, a great paper. Uh, PolySwitch uh, resettable devices fundamentals. Uh, so let's zoom in here a bit so you can read it with me. Um, these devices are a polymer, and it's a crystalline polymer, and embedded in the polymer is carbon black. 
so there's a bunch of conductive carbon in this thing, and so uh, the carbon uh, creates a path for the electricity to go through, and uh, it acts as a small resistance resistor. So uh, you have some heating that can occur, and the polymer will expand. And when the polymer expands, then these carbon black uh, um, nodules move apart from each other and it, it goes open circuit. It becomes more and more resistive like, like a, a carbon resistor and then finally it, it opens up and there's no uh, current flow any longer. Um, so it looks just like a variable resistor. Um, so this is uh, kind of the typical application. You have uh, some power supply, you have a load, and then you put the uh, resistor in series. And we saw that when I was testing it. Um, the other uh, uh, interesting graph here is this one, uh, which shows you uh, the resistance of the part versus the temperature. So as the temperature goes up, the resistance changes just a little bit until it hits the trip point, and then it, 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 it goes up uh, very quickly. Um, this graph is a log graph, so this is a quite a huge change in, uh, in value. Uh, so uh, there is a trip point, and then uh, it quickly uh, quickly changes. But it's a it's a function of the power amount of energy that the, the device is uh, device is handling. Um, I haven't looked at this page yet. Uh, it's the example of hold and trip current as a function of temperature. So for a particular temperature, of course, the trips are going to be different. If it's already hot, then it's going to fail quick more quickly. It doesn't take as much energy to get a trip. So. Uh, that's a graph of that. Um, let's see, this is log time to trip. So this is the amount of time it takes to trip and the current. And we saw that when we were testing it, that when we were just a little bit over the trip point, it did take a long time for that power to build up, the energy to build up, and it finally tripped. Whereas if you were quite a ways over it, um, then the, the time was much quicker. So uh, it turns out that it's, uh, it follows this graph. Uh, this is a log graph as well. Um, and then uh, this is a graph of how quickly how quickly it can recover. Um, this is the the data sheet for the um, for the actual part that I bought. Uh, the let's see here the uh, part number was a uh, XF zero five zero. Um, so the 050 was the 500 milliamps. I'm not sure what the XF is, probably just um, the particular device parameters for this thing. Um, but we can take a look down here at the, um, the top here is just uh, uh, the size uh, and everything. But this is kind of down here is what we're, what we're interested in. Okay. Um, so uh, the uh, the hold current is set to 500 milliamps, and the trip current is one amp. Um, so double the double the hold. Uh, the initial resistance uh, it starts out at 0.5 ohms, and uh, it can be as much as 0.77 ohms. Uh, this is the initial condition. Um, the time to trip is number of seconds. So um, they run it up to two and a half amps, and it takes four seconds to trip. Um, trip seconds at, yeah. Uh, let's see, one hour post-trip resistance. Um, so it can be as high as 1.17 1, 1 ohms after an hour. Uh, so it takes a while for it to recover. Um, trip state. Power dissipation, number of watts. So 0.77 watts uh, looks as like how much power you need to put into the thing for it to trip. Um, yeah, but uh, these are interesting devices. Uh, I've used them uh, many times. Uh, you'll see them a lot in battery circuits where you want to make sure that your battery is short circuit protected. Especially with lithiums, they can be very dangerous if they short. Um, probably should put these inside your um, uh, your scooter. You see a lot of things catching fire in videos. <laughs> they didn't have one of these. They should they should have had one of these. So if you overcurrent the thing, it should uh, 
uh, it should trip. Um, and it's nice. It's uh, easier to work with than a fuse because it's it resets itself automatically, and uh, it's cheaper and smaller than a resettable uh, circuit breaker, and um, they're much easier to implement, uh, as we saw in something like this. Um, I actually have one of these in a, a breadboard, and uh, I didn't realize I had shorted something out, and and suddenly the breadboard just went dark. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, the 3-amp uh, resettable fuse actually saved my circuit, so uh, uh, I'm in, in, it's uh, a good thing to have.